Hey everybody, welcome to Mike's World. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Toshiba Tekra A50F business laptop. Now Toshiba and Dynabook have merged and one of the things you're going to notice immediately about this is that the laptop doesn't say Toshiba, it says Dynabook. Uh, it is the Toshiba Dynabook Tekra A50F. Um, so with those two merging, I bought one of these. This is the new 2020 edition. I've had it for about a month. And we're going to get into what I think about this laptop. Is it good? Isn't it? Is it not good? As a disclaimer, this is not a review for gamers. Um, this, I am a creative professional. I work in television, video production. I do a lot of editing, Adobe Premiere, After Effects, things like that. So this review is going to be geared towards that, not so much gaming. So just disclosure right off the bat about that. So let's get in and take a look about what this laptop has and I'm going to compare it to what I've just, uh, the laptop I replaced um, with this one. So let's get into it right away. This laptop has an eighth generation Intel i7 core 8650 processor, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte solid state drive, three USB 3.2 ports. It has Bluetooth, HDMI out, is a 1920 by 1080 15.6 inch screen, has an SD card slot, and it has a DVD drive, which you rarely see with laptops anymore. This A50F is the fifth Toshiba laptop I've bought. It replaces my trusty Toshiba Satellite A505 that I bought back in 2009. This workhorse of a laptop I've used the past 11 years has 8 gigs of DD3 RAM, the first generation Intel i7 Q720 processor, and a 500 gigabyte optical hard drive. It was the top of the line when I bought it, and it certainly held up over the years. This old satellite A505 still does a great job of running Premiere and Photoshop, even with 4K video, but really lags when trying to use After Effects. That is why it was time for me to upgrade. It's important to point out that there are a few software programs I pay for to keep all my computers running smoothly. The first is Norton Antivirus. I can't stress enough how important it is to keep your antivirus software up to date. I also use a secure VPN connection through Norton as well. In addition, every computer should have the latest version of CCleaner Professional installed. It will keep your PC clean of adware, junk cache files, and ad trackers. It can even clean up your registry, which slows your computer down over time. I credit all of these with helping me keep my old laptop running smoothly over the years. So now let's get into the new A50F and, and what, um, what it does, what it doesn't do. Um, and what I think overall of this laptop. Now, I'll tell you first and foremost, after a month of use, um, I'm thrilled to death with this thing. It is a tremendous laptop. It's very powerful. It runs every program that I want smoothly, cleanly, boots really fast. Um, it's just, it's light years ahead. And, and I've used various laptops over the years from HP, um, Dell, everything. And the Toshibas, I believe, are just great laptops, and this thing has running great. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't have a few design flaws, and we're going to get into those as well. This does have Windows 10, and it boot, as I mentioned, it does boot up pretty fast. And I was just blown away by how much faster I was able to work in Premiere and After Effects uh, with this new laptop. Everything that I've done so far creatively, I believe I've only pushed this laptop to probably about 50% of what it's capable of doing. Uh, I have ran Premiere and After Effects simultaneously, working on projects, rendering in the background while using another uh, another piece of software or whatever, and it's just been it's been great. I mean, I've had one issue uh, where Adobe crashed. It's the first time Adobe has crashed on me in probably six years, um, and I, I was throwing everything at it, and and I believe that the crash had more to do with Adobe than it did the laptop. Um, because I had just recently updated to the latest software for, from Creative Cloud. So um, I don't blame the laptop for that crash. Otherwise, um, uh, it, it's been pretty well. That said, the laptop is not without some drawbacks, and let's take a look at those. First up is the single 3.5 millimeter jack that serves as a dual role as a headphone and microphone port. Windows 10 can easily distinguish between the two, but Adobe Premiere cannot. Every time I plug in or unplug headphones, I have to go into Adobe Premiere under audio hardware and change the speaker output. 
that is really a big, big drawback for me. I, I was not happy about that. Um, I, I think it might be more of a design flaw with Adobe than the laptop, but um, I, I really like the, la the older laptops that had a separate mic input and a separate audio headphone jack. Um, I just, I like keeping those separated. I, I realize the single port is designed for gamers. So, um, but for me, using a, a, as a creative professional using Adobe Premiere, it's really a drawback. It's really a pain having to go in and switch that every time you unplug. And I notice also um, that using my Bluetooth headphones paired with the computer, I still had to go into Adobe and switch that output every time from, from the speak, in, internal speakers to the headphones. So I know it's an Adobe issue. It's a real, real pain. I hate it. Um, it and it's something I never had to deal with running Adobe Premiere on the older laptop. So that had the two different inputs. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but I, I, that's one part I really don't like. The other issue that I really have with this laptop um, has to do with the pad, the uh, finger pad. So the, the issue here is this. When I am constantly going back and forth between using the finger pad and using a mouse. Um, if I'm sitting down editing long term, I'll use the mouse. If I go in and if I'm just throwing it up real quick, I'm doing some quick work, I like to use my finger on the pad. So why, what's the issue here? Well, when I use a mouse, um, it's a little, you know, has a little USB dongle that plugs in. It's a wireless mouse. When I use that mouse, I like to turn off the finger pad. And the way you do that here is hitting the FN and it's up here at F9. So you turn off the, the pad and you can work that way. If you come up here and type, you're not accidentally touching something. And you know, I can use the mouse. The problem is, um, which is not a problem when the old Toshiba satellite laptop is that if you turn off the pad and you forget to turn it on before you shut down your computer, when you reboot, the pad does not work and hitting the FN F9 button doesn't turn it on. The only way you can get your cursor to work and your uh, mouse to work is by plugging in that mouse, scrolling over, logging in, and once you're logged in and you're in Windows, now turn on the pad and it works and then you can disconnect your mouse. Huge flaw in my opinion, huge flaw. Um, if you are using a mouse, you disconnect and you power back up and the pad's not working, you ought to be able to hit uh, the FN and F9 and turn it on immediately and it should work. So um, that is a huge uh, drawback in my opinion. Um, it, it's, it's annoying. It's, it's annoying more than anything. It doesn't hamper really the performance of the laptop, but it is really annoying. So, um, and obviously, yeah, so high estate fan if you haven't noticed. So, um, but really other than that, uh, it, it doesn't really get that hot. The only other th issue with it aesthetically is, is you look at it and it has this like uh, composite wood panel feeling to it, a uh, design. It looks really good. And I was really hoping that that meant you didn't get a lot of fingerprints and smudges because that was one of the big drawbacks with the, the 505 um, Toshiba satellite. It's just, it had a glossy, um, it's a bigger computer, but it had a glossy co coating and every fingerprint showed up. And I was kind of hoping when I got this out of the box, I'm like, oh man, this, it's not going to show up as bad. And I was wrong. Um, it, it really does. I got to keep it wiped down, which is kind of annoying. It's what I had to do with the old one. Um, but I guess, you know, I guess that's something you have to deal with with most laptops. So I guess I shouldn't complain too much about that. The only other drawback I would say with this laptop uh, in concluding this would be um, the, the internal speakers listened up here on this bar are not very good. They're terrible. They're, they're, they're the worst set of internal laptop speakers I've ever heard. Um, the, the, the Toshiba Satellite A505, my old one, um, had decent sound that came out of the computer itself. You, you really didn't have to wear headphones to edit and you could get pretty close and then if you want to fine tune, put your headphones on, so on and so forth. Not the case here. Um, I cannot edit without headphones. I mean, impossible because um, it, is, it is some of the worst sounding uh, speakers I've ever heard coming out of a laptop. So. Those are a little bit of the shortcomings, but other than that, there's really nothing else. Um, the, the USB 3.2 ports are amazing. It has a USB-C port as well. Um, still has the old display out, still has the ethernet uh, import if you want to hardwire. Um, and then of course the DVD drive. Uh, and actually for me, there's times I still get requests uh, to get Final 
things on DVDs and I have to burn DVDs. And so having a DVD port, I do have an external uh, DVD and Blu-ray that I can plug in, but having it internally is pretty nice if you're a creative professional that does a lot of video and stuff. Uh, even in this day and age where it's video on demand, and it's all files, I mean, you still do get the request for DVDs. Um, it is nice to have the output displays, HDMI out, things like that. Some people think of that as, you know, why would I have that? That's kind of old school, but um, there's still a lot of people that use that stuff. And it's, it's nice to have it as a backup in case uh, you're not able to uh, cast to a screen or something. Having that HDMI backup is really nice. Um, so the other thing, too, with uh, using OBS streaming to live stream with this thing is remarkable I mean it is it is amazing how fast how much better it works than the satellite 505 that was one one critical reason why I pulled the plug or pulled the trigger and upgraded was um, uh, streaming on that was not was not easy um, and it was glitchy so far with the a50f everything has been crystal clear perfect quality um, I just don't really have a lot of complaints so even though I mentioned some of the shortcomings of this laptop, overall I'd have to give it a, um, an A minus for a grade, maybe, maybe B plus A minus. Um, it, it's up there, and having the 32 gigs of RAM is outstanding. The processor is really fast. Um, I did toy with the idea of waiting and getting one with the new 10th generation uh, Intel processors. Those things I think clock out at over 5.5 gigahertz, which is outstanding. Um, this one clocks at. 4.6, I think, 4.8. Um, so, you know, still pretty good. Everything that I do, this thing handles. I've tried 4K video, not a problem. Uh, so, um, you know, when I bought the, the Satellite uh, 505, um, it was about $1,300. That's how much I paid for this was $1,300. And at the time, I went for the best processor available and everything, and I got 11 years out of that laptop. I hope I get 10 years out of this laptop. Um, that's that's my goal. I don't think you should have to run out and buy a new laptop every couple of years. Um, with 32 gigs of RAM and a, a terabyte solid state drive, that's another thing, the solid state drive. I highly recommend those. Um, the 8th generation i7, i7 core processor. I just don't think you can go wrong with this. And now when you do get it out of the box, you know, you're going to expect to see Toshiba on it and it's going to most likely say Dynabook if you buy one in 2020. This laptop also has the keypad. Um, the number keypad on the right uh, is a big benefit having that, in my opinion, with your laptop. It also has with Windows 10, uh, if you want, you don't have to have the long janky passwords. Uh, you can do four, six, eight digit pins, uh, which are numbers just, you know, like you would use for an ATM card or something. It's your choice on how much security you want to have. Um, and that's pretty much what I have to say about this laptop. Again, just in, in closing, I just want to say, Anybody out there, any laptop you buy, no matter what it is, uh, you have to keep your antivirus up to date. And I highly, highly recommend CCleaner Professional. They are not sponsoring this. So that I get nothing by saying that, but I have used that for a long time. And, one, and just a quick overview of what CCleaner Professional will do. You can set it where when you, you can wipe your free space, basically. So any files you've had in the past, you know how like you, when you delete files, you don't really delete them. When you use CCleaner and you wipe your free space, um, the stuff's gone. Like there's no retrieving it, it's gone. I mean, if you use CCleaner. So I use it to keep the caches clean, all those places that the novice uh, computer user isn't gonna know where to clean out and go find stuff. Um, and it just keeps your computer running smoothly, running faster, clean out your registry keys from time to time. And it's all easy through CCleaner Professional, step by step. Uh, a license for one computer is like 20 bucks. It is highly worth it. So go check out CCleaner Professional. Just Google it and you'll, you'll see it. So that's all I have right now for the um, Toshiba Dynabook Tecra A50F business laptop. This is excellent for uh, business professionals, creative professionals. And um, it's probably a great gaming computer too, although I'm not a gamer. Uh, and the, most, the only game I've played on this so far is World Series of Poker. And it looks and played outstanding. So, uh, but for you heavy gamers, I don't know. Maybe somebody out there can do a review of this laptop for you. So thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please like it. Please comment in the comments below. And always please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe uh, to this channel. And I would appreciate that as well. So uh, let me know what you think. If you have any comments, I'll try to respond to as many comments as possible. And uh, everybody out there, just have a great day.